Hey, 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 and welcome to the lecture on the cardiovascular system. It's designed for Anatomy 202. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, the heart, so we're, we're talking about the heart, the arteries, and the veins in this lecture. Um, it, the heart pumps 7,000 liters of blood through the body each day. So in other words, I'm not going to ask you that question because that's, that's an average. But in other words, the heart is your favorite muscle. I mean, it is working hard, and we don't even have to think about it. And so it's your favorite one. About two and a half billion times in a lifetime. Average, of course, for depending on how long you live. And then the heart pumps blood through the uh, arteries, arterioles, and then capillaries, venules, veins, and then all the way back to the heart. So that's, that's like the arteries and veins. We'll talk more about that later. The heart and all the blood vessels make up the cardiovascular system. So let's dive in. There's really two circuits. The pulmonary, remember pulmonary, think about lungs. Pulmonary goes, transports oxygen, poor blood from the heart to the lungs and back. And so if I was going to draw this for you, you'd look something like this. So think about pulmonary on the last slide. It says transports oxygen, poor blood from the heart. So that's generally blue. Normally deoxygenated blood is blue. So from the heart to the lungs and then back. So let's see if I can do that in black, maybe. Okay, so from the heart to the lungs and back. And that's on both. So that is the pulmonary circuit. From the heart to the lungs and back to the heart. Now, maybe just make a note so you can use it to study for the rest of the time. Deoxygenated blood. That would be blood with no oxygen, right? Is blue in all textbooks and oxygenated blood is going to be red so that'll kind of help you see the difference okay the systemic circle looking at the last slide while I look at the picture transports oxygen rich blood from the heart so I'm gonna erase all this still black from the heart to the body and back to the heart. So both of these are the systemic circle. So the systemic goes like this all the way to your pinky toe and back. The pulmonary goes like this. So maybe that'll kind of help you there. Highlight both of those things on that last slide. That'll be helpful. So you want to know the difference in the two circuits. Now, I do want to say that most blood, and this is going to be later on too, but most blood, the majority of the blood, is in the systemic veins. Okay, so there's a picture of it, uh, and I won't ask you those numbers on the test, so don't worry about memorizing those, but it just says that it's for average 14 centimeters long, 9 centimeters wide. And you'll, I'm going to go ahead and point this out. The heart has four chambers. It has this chamber, this chamber, and then two big chambers. So it kind of looked, if, if I were drawing it straight, it would be like that, one two, three, four chambers. And you'll notice um, these little flappy things right here. Those are called auricles. Those are little flappy things on the heart. Um, this part right here, that is the apex of the heart. So just kind of go ahead and point some stuff out for you to, for lab. But the, the top two chambers are atrium. And the bottom two, so these two, one, two, are ventricles. So you got two atrium, two ventricles. There's where it is. It lies posterior to the sternum, so behind that sternum bone that you learned about in 201. And then it sits on the diaphragm. Now your diaphragm is what um, contracts and relaxes as you breathe, separates the 
respiratory from the digestive system. It's your second favorite muscle. Heart's favorite. Diaphragm's second favorite. Just kidding. Okay, the layers of the heart. And so around the heart, we have the epicardium. Highlight that. And, oh, not like that, though. Highlight that. And it's also called visceral pericardium. Okay, and that, that's going to be the outer layer. So highlight outer layer, too. So these are the three layers around the heart. The myocardium is in the myo muscle layer. M-Y-O means muscle. And you know E-P-I means outside, right? On outermost layer, like epidermis of skin. And then the endocardium, you want to know that one is the inner. Oh, I do that all the time. Inner layer. So make sure you know all three of those. You'll see all three of those on the test. And you want to know epicardium is on the outside. So look at the picture, you can tell. Myocardium, that's the muscle in the middle. And then the endocardium, that's the inner lining of the heart. So that's going to be the inside chambers. And all three of these layers we call the pericardium. The P-E-R-I, or that, this right here, the, peric the outside most. P-E-R-I means around. And so the visceral pericardium, it's actually touching the outside of the heart. And it's got this oily substance underneath it. Um, a, a serous membrane that's slippery and so whenever the heart pumps that visceral pericardium uh, it's like it's lubricated so that the when the heart pumps the the tissue doesn't bump up against the heart so it doesn't feel like friction it's, it's nice and smooth um, so you'll see this information um, in this table right here but the endocardium that's where the heart valves form So it says it right there. Forms protective inner lining of the chambers and valves. Uh, but you want to know the functions of each of those. And so the epicardium or the visceral pericardium has the serous membrane. That's that oily substance. It's protective. The myocardium, we already said, it's the muscle. And that's what contracts to pump, right? And then the endocardium, that's going to be the inside where the valves are. So take a second and look over all that. If you were, this is just a little by the way, if you were to have an infection in that, in that outer layer, we call that endocarditis or pericarditis. And that would be inflammation. of the membrane surrounding oh, I think I spelled that wrong the heart but I've heard before it's very painful I've never had it but I've heard before it feels like there's friction every time your heart pumps it's like something's rubbing against it and so I've heard that that's very painful Okay, next slide. You, you got four chambers. We said this. You got two, you have a right atrium and a left atrium. And it just for uh, studying purposes, if you ever see atria, that's plural. Atrium, so you have two atria. There's a right atrium and a left atrium. The atrium is singular. But anyway, the heart is divided into four chambers, two atria and two ventricle. Um, the atria are thin, small. At the top, the little flappy thingies are called auricles, and that's on the lab test. Anyway, ventricles are thick-walled. Okay, so there's your four chambers. You want to highlight the right atrium receives blood from the systemic circuit, but it receives blood from the, this is what I wanted to write, the superior vena cava, the inferior vena cava, and the coronary sinus. Now I'm going to point out all those things later, but just highlight them now. Okay, the right ventricle receives blood from the right atrium. The left atrium receives blood from the pulmonary veins. 
And then the left ventricle receives blood from the left atrium. Okay, let's make let's make sense of that. I'm I'm visual. Let's make sense of that with a picture. Okay, looking at this picture, and you may want to zoom in or look at it really closely. Okay, this is a picture of the heart opened up. And so let me just first go over the chambers. So, okay, we know that this over here, I'm just looking at this picture. Just that one. So we know that this over here is our right side. Yes? Okay, well that's the patient's left. So the way you're looking at this heart, your right side is not the right side of the heart. So go ahead and just... I always do this anytime I see the heart or anything in anatomy. Go ahead and memorize that this is going to be the left side and this is going to be the right side. So that way you're not confused. Go ahead and write that at the top of the paper. Okay, this is your right atrium. This is your left atrium. So the little ones are atriums. This is your right ventricle and this is your left ventricle. Okay, let me let me see if I can make this bigger for you. Hang on. Okay, let's review those again. I got I got the picture bigger. Right atrium, right ventricle, left. Oh, uh, sorry. Whoops. Right ventricle, left ventricle. So those are your four chambers. You got two atriums at the top. Man, left atrium. Darn. Okay, you got two atriums at the top. The right and the left, and then you got the ventricles right and left at the bottom. So take a second, get that down first. Okay, now let's go over the pathway of blood. And you're going to watch some animations uh, in lab that I think will help you, but for now, you got me. Okay, blood enters into the right atrium from the blue deoxygenated. We're carrying the deoxygenated blood back to the heart. So through the superior vena cava, and the, this one down here, the inferior vena cava. So blood is entering from all the way from your pinky toe. Up, 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 up the body. To the right ventricle. And to the right atrium. And from the superior vena cava. Well, let's say from your arms. So blood enter. Think about that last slide we just looked at. Blood enters the right atrium from the superior vena cava the inferior vena cava, and then, you see this little bitty circle right there? That's the coronary sinus. That's the blood from the heart. So the heart is a muscle. It needs blood. Not just blood inside it. It needs blood to be carried to it, just like a bicep does. And so the coronary sinus is the blood from the heart. So three places, that's a multiple choice question. Three places is right atrium, receives blood from the superior and inferior vena cava and the coronary sinus. Okay, now, that's step one. Step two, blood is going to go from the right atrium, it's going to go down into the right ventricle. Okay, so, it's you see how it, got, it went through? See, I'm right here, it goes down into the right ventricle and it went through that valve. It kind of looks like a basketball net to me. That valve is called the tricuspid valve. That's important. That stringy stuff is called chordae tendinae. And you'll see it later in the in the PowerPoint, but just kind of note it now. Okay, so it goes right atrium through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. Now, from there Going back black. It's going to go, it's going to, the blood is going to leave the right ventricle and go up. This is going to be your lungs over here. And it's actually on both sides. But it's going to go through the pulmonary valve, pulmonary trunk, all the way, pulmonary artery. So let me highlight those words for you. So pulmonary valve was right here pulmonary trunk and then pulmonary artery. So it actually, if you'll look at the diagram I'm drawing here, it actually goes up and out and it separates. It goes this way and this way because you got two lungs, right? So now blood is going to go to the lungs and there it's going to pick up the oxygen. So it's picking up the oxygen in the capillaries. That's that's where the good stuff happens. And so, so you'll notice that it's blue because it's 
the poem right here, it's blue because it's deoxygenated blood. Okay, then the oxygenated blood is going to enter back into the heart and it's going to enter into the left atrium. So right there, left atrium. It's going to go through the mitra valve or bicuspid valve, same thing into the left ventricle. Now from the left ventricle it's going to flex really hard. Flex, flex, flex. And it's going to go out the aorta. You can't really see how it happens there. It's going to go, there's an aortic valve just like there's a pulmonary valve. So it, it looks like this one, the pulmonary valve. But it's going to go up and out this big aorta. Now the aorta has an ascending a transverse and a descending aorta. Okay, let me do all of that again. I'll go quicker this time.